Hey guys, OJ Albina here, bringing you guys yet another episode of our Draft League study. Today we're going to be talking about Hatterini, very, very cool new mon, Psychic and Fairy type, which is tried and true typing of stuff like Mega Gardevoir, um, and, and regular Gardevoir, I guess, not just Mega Gardevoir, uh, but very, very solid typing, very, very strong mon, but very interesting as well in its stat distribution. I'm really excited to talk about it. I actually got a chance to draft it recently in our, um, on our APA Classic Season 15 run, which I'm actually uploading to the channel, so if you do want to check out Hatterini in action, it actually did super well in week one, um, if you want to check that, I believe this is going up after week one. Yeah, now I have to make it go after, up after week one. But yeah, um, did really, really solid for us there, and I'm hoping it does well for us the rest of the season. So if you want to check that out, be sure to go do so. Shameless plug. Uh, but with that being said, I do want to jump on right into Hatterini's stats, typings, and abilities. So as I said before, it is a psychic fairy typing, which is pretty, pretty solid offensively um, with the correct coverage, which it does have, which we'll talk about pretty soon here. Abilities being healer, which is absolutely useless for us in the singles, uh, you know, format that we're playing in the draft league format. Um, anticipation, which isn't the worst ability in the world, but it's also not the best ability in the world. You know, it's nice to know that your opponent has super effective cards for you, but most of the time you'll be able to use that uh, by yourself. But the main allure of this thing is obviously going to be Magic Bounce, a phenomenal ability to turn hazards, to turn status. It's actually really nice on a. Um, you know, bulky mon like this. this deters taunt, which is obviously going to be super clean for a mon. As slow as this is going to want to set up trick room very often. Spoilers, spoilers. But really, really solid ability for this mon in particular. I do love the fact that it does have the access to um, magic bounce there. It's just going to be really solid for this thing. Stats wise, let's jump right into it. It has 56 HP, 90 attack, which is incredibly surprising, uh, 95 sp uh, defense. 136 special attack, which is very strong. 103 speed depth and 29 speed. So very, very slow, but decently bulky. HP stat is uh, a bit lacking, but you kind of circumvent that a little bit with its defense and speed depth stats. Not ridiculously high, I almost said ridiculous high, because it's definitely not, but a bit odd how high its attack set is. Definitely did not expect that when looking at this mod, but 90 attack is definitely usable, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then obviously the 136 attack, uh, special attack and 29 speed, which is going to be uh, the main allure of this mod right here. Let's jump right into some moves as this thing gets. We're going to start off with some uh, special coverage. As I said before, this thing is really strong with that base 136 special attack, uh, throwing off big attacks such as the Psychic and Psy Shock being its uh, Psychic stab. Dazzling Gleam being its special uh, fairy stab, and then access to Mystical Fire, which is honestly like really, really good for this mod. Being able to hit those steel types with this typing is um phenomenal. And it's not a weak move, it's, it's I mean, it's stronger than the HP Fire, so HP being gone from the game really doesn't hurt this thing that much when you take into account that uh, Mystical Fire is 75 base power. It also lowers the target's special attack by one, so if it's a special attacker, it's gonna have even more breaking through your pretty decent defenses as is. Um, so Mystical Fire is really, really big on this thing. It's going to be a move you're going to see run on it a lot. Next up, we're going to talk about some more uh, special coverage that it gets. It doesn't get the most in the world, but it has access to Shadow Ball to hit other Psychics. Giga Drain, which can potentially come in useful. You never know if you're going to play a four times week one that you can't touch um, very well otherwise. They can need a hit from you. Um, play Rough, I wanted to put that there just because, like I said before, it does have that base 90 physical attack, so uh, it's definitely usable. Adds access to Swords Dance as well, which I didn't put on any of these slides because I completely forgot until I was talking right now. But um, Swords Dance can be a way to circumvent this thing. This mediocre, but you know, pretty decent physical attack um, and be able to boost up and kind of do some damage because you also have access to stuff like Psycho Cut, um, Shadow Claw, other physical coverage like that that I did not put on here, but I figured it was worth mentioning at least in... Uh, you know, at least in my words and stuff like that, I posted just on the slides and stuff. And then also also has access to Dark Pulse, another way to hit those psychic types, um, a way to hit ghost types super effectively too, um, on top of Shadow Ball, I guess. But you know, there's ones that will hit uh, potentially better than Shadow Ball, depending on what the matchup is and all that good stuff. So I figured it would be worthwhile mentioning. Next, we're going to talk about some of the utility moves that this thing gets, and it gets a lot. This is going to be a great support mod on top of them on the hits ridiculously hard. Has access to Trick Room, which is going to be big, 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 big. If you are drafting Trick Room, 
then you should draft this Pokemon. Um, I really do think it's one of the better setters of the uh, Trick Room in this format. I think it's better at setting Trick Room than Reunicus. That's for uh, that's for darn sure. Because of the fact that you can't be taunted despite how slow you are, you have a Magic Bounce. So most ones are not going to be able to taunt you. They're not going to be able to throw off some status on you and be really annoying like that. Which is great for um, also Call Mindsets. You know, not being toxic to, uh, as a Call Mind mod is pretty pretty big. Being like max fizz death with some calm mind and throwing off big boosted hits with your 136 special attack is obviously super super clean um so it synergizes well with that uh magic bounce ability healing wish which is phenomenal a great great move um one that its fellow psychic fairy gardevoir has and uses very often so you get a trick room with this mon you have a weakened snorlax in the back uh, and you want to get it back up to full because you're banned lax and you know it breaks through your opponent's team, but you just don't have the opportunity to really get it in to do a lot of work. You can healing wish that guy back up, put him right in the middle of the trick room, and have him do some work, which is obviously super, super great. The option to just heal up one of your more important team members um, is phenomenal. And then access to aromatherapy, which makes this thing a pretty decent cleric as well, being able to you know, get burns and toxics and bundle ways off your other ones. Obviously, really, really nice. And again, as I talk about this, these support moves, keep in mind, this thing's not really going to get taunted by much, um, unless it has a, an ability that kind of, you know, goes past its ability, like a mold breaker type ability, then you should be fine most of the time. So we're going to talk about a couple more moves, but Taunt Pass is nice, whether your league allows Dry Pass or they allow the passing of stats, maybe passing some Calm Minds or something, passing a Sword Stance or something if you're feeling extra crazy, um, or even just Dry Baton Pass in general. is a great momentum move if you don't want to use Healing Wish to just, you know, straight up sack off your Hatterene. Um, Baton Pass is obviously a great option to get uh, another one of your teammates in safely, potentially on a switch or something like that. Like, Baton Passes, they go into their steel, into your Dougie, you trap them and you knock them out. It's obviously great. Rest is going to be really, really nice uh, for like Calm Mind Rest Talk sets. I think they're going to be great on this thing. Because again, you can't be taunted, you can't be status or anything like that. Being able to Calm Mind up and rest up is obviously super nice. And it has access to Thunder Wave and Nuzzle. So um, both of which can be used in certain scenarios. It just kind of depends on which one you're uh, more so needing. Most 99.99% of the time, it's going to be Thunder Wave because of the fact that you can't be taunted. Um, Nuzzle is usually only used like on stuff like Spear Goal and other mods like that. That are afraid of being taunted, they can uh, nuzzle without the fear of having them move blocked by taunt, which is obviously great for it. Uh, oh no! So yeah, next. <laughs> Sorry, I totally thought there was another move slide, but it looks like those are going to be the uh, moves that we have for how to be right. Get these four slides, all very very valuable on this thing. Um, but we're going to jump into some sets next, and I have six whole sets that I think are really going to be um, the main ones you're going to see in the league setting most of the time. Really, really solid. Uh, I really do think this one's a great tier two potential Pokemon, and let's jump right into it and uh, start talking about that a little bit. So here's a slide that I accidentally just showed you, um, but wasn't supposed to. Now I can though, because I, I you know, was able to finish my thoughts. But we're going to start off with an uh, offensive trick room set, or an OTR Hatterini. We're going to rock out with a Life Orb. Uh, quiet nature, you're going to go min speed, obviously, because you want to underslow everything you can. There are some pretty slow mods in the format that can potentially try and underslow you if you're not running min speed IV. So you want to do that and you want to run a minus speed nature. But uh, nonetheless, you're going to be running Trick Room, obviously, Psychic, Mystical Fire, and Dazzling Gleam. You can potentially tech on like a Shadow Ball or a Dark Pulse and place one of those moves. But most of the time, you're going to be running those great dual stab combination and then a Mystical Fire to hit those Steel types. This mod hits incredibly hard when you have that speed advantage under Trick Room and you have that Life Orb tacked onto it. Again, you have 136 special attack. You're going to hit like an absolute truck, which is obviously great for this thing. Uh, really punching holes through things, setting up Trick Rooms for your other uh, potential mods in the back, or even just serving as its own Trick Room mod in general. Just getting up a Trick Room and punching holes, like I said before. Speaking of punching holes, we're gonna jump into a Choice Spec set which I think is very, very solid as well. Uh, again, you're ridiculously strong, so you're boosting up even more your special attack at the, uh, you know, the disadvantage of being able to set up Trick Room or switch up your moves. Though in the right matchup, I think this can be really, really solid. Psychic, Dazzling Gleam, Mystical Fire, Shadow Ball. I think Shadow Ball can be teched off for like, you know, maybe that Dark Horse or that um, Giga Drain, or maybe they have a Fizz Death Wall, um, I mean, like a Spur Death Wall that cannot take a Choice Spec Spike Psychic. You can throw that on there too, obviously, which is really, really clean. This is going to be used as, uh, you know, a wall break. It's going to approve of, you know, like good momentum, bringing it in and stuff like that, obviously helping it out. Um, so choice spec could be really, really clean on this thing. 
Another set we have right here is going to be a focus sash set, um, which is going to be basically used to guarantee that you are getting up your trick room. You can't be O-code in one hit, um, obviously because of the focus sash. You can get up your trick room, and then you have um, two coverage moves essentially being uh, Dazzling Glimmer Psychic, your stab, and Mystical Fire. I mean, if you're not playing against a steel type you're really scared of, you can go just Dazzling Gleam plus Psychic, which is obviously definitely an option. Um, but most of the time, if your opponent drafts correctly, they're going to have a psychic, uh, you know, a psychic and very steel type switch in. So Mystical Fire is obviously good for that. And then access to Healing Wish too, which is going to be really, really clean. Getting one of your mods back up and fully healthy under that trick room that you set for them, or even just in general, setting that, um, setting out Hatterene and getting off a guaranteed Healing Wish is really, really clean. And again, I say guaranteed because you are Magic Bounce. You can't be taunted by 99% of mods in the game, which is obviously going to be great. Next up, we have a Rest Talk set, which is pretty cool. A Calm Mind, Sleep Talk, um, Rest, and Stored Power set. Stored Power can be substituted out. Stored, this set's more so geared if you're going up against a team that does not have a Dark type, or a team that has a Dark type that you think you can easily remove, or is not very good versus you, and you think you can, they're either not going to bring it, or like I said, you can easily remove it. But Stored Power can be easily substituted for um, Psychic, Psy Shock, Dazzling Gleam if you're... Um, uh, you know, not scared of it like that. Uh, if you're not scared of their, like, potential steel type or anything like that that they have, this set can be really cool and really scary for an opponent to deal with. If you start getting up some boost, you get some good sleep talk rolls, and you really start steamrolling through your opponent, um, especially with that store power boost, you know, getting you plus 20 base power on your attack every time you get one boost. So you're essentially getting 40 um, on those boosts per Calm Mind. But you are a little bit reliant on the Calm Mind if you do bring that, so just keep that in mind, obviously, when you're playing with this guy. Next up, we're going to talk about a, uh, a Calm Mind set, whether it be Leftovers, Three Attacks, or you could even run like a Resto Chesto, um, you know, Calm Mind Hattering, which is obviously really nice, giving yourself back up to full, but still not having to sacrifice a bunch of coverage. Uh, Calm Mind Three Attacks is also a very viable option, depending on this thing's uh, defensive matchup. If you can set up Trick Room or something else for this thing, is obviously super plain. The Calm Mind Psychic, Dazzling Gleam, Mystical Fire, and you can also uh, take out one of those moves for rest, maybe slap on a Chesto Barrier or something like that. Um, really letting this thing boost up and give your opponent a lot of trouble. And then lastly, we're going to kind of get into the more wacky stuff that this thing can do. Um, not necessarily wacky, but something you're not going to see as much. I called this set in my nose, I said dies, but also helps. Uh, we have a Light Case slash Focus Sash set with Magic Bounce, obviously his ability, Max Fist Death with Light Screen, Thunder Wave slash Trick Room, Dazzling Gleam, and Healing Ult wish now i don't have dual screens on this because it unfortunately does not reflect for some reason which really does blow for this thing um but you still have the other coverage moves or uh not coverage moves other utility moves to kind of circumvent that and help you out otherwise uh thunder wave obviously to slow things down if you're not running a trick room team that week or you can obviously get up that guaranteed trick room with like a focus sash or something like that um, Dazzling Game, just so you're not complete set fodder for everything that wants to come in and attack you and then healing wish obviously to get something back up to full so you can use this thing as a just a full support mon as a suicide you know kind of get my mon healthy um and disrupt your team while i'm doing it which is obviously super solid so it just shows that this mon isn't just going to be you know a special attacking call mind uh you know specs trick room mon it can do other things as well for your team so you don't need to draft hard trick room in order to utilize this pokemon which is obviously super clean another really wacky option again is going to be like potentially sword dance or something like that uh, I didn't put it down here because I didn't think it's going to be something you're going to really see too often. I just don't see the benefit of running Source Dance over a special set most of the time, but it's definitely an option, so don't, you know, just throw it straight out the window. Definitely keep it in mind while building, but I don't think it's going to be the craziest thing in the world. But yeah, those are going to be the sets um, in which I think Hattery is going to mostly run and uh, things it's going to do great. As for teammates with this thing, um, I think it's great on Trick Room, obviously. Something I drafted, again, in my AP Classic C15 team, where I, uh, it's one of my favorite cores I've kind of drafted that kind of fit together really well. I got Aegislash, um, Snorlax, and Hatterene. They cover each other phenomenally. Aegislash taking those uh, fighting moves for, um, what do you call it? Snorlax, Hatterene, and Aegislash taking those fighting moves for, um, I mean, uh, Hatterene also taking those fighting moves for Snorlax as well. They just kind of pivot around. They do really well in having that healing list support for those bulky Trick Room mods. It's obviously great. 
Having momentum to get this thing in for free if you're using a more offensive set is obviously really, really nice. And just having benefactors of that trip room and that um, that healing wish is obviously going to be really clean with this monster. So there's a lot of mods you could really slap on a team with this thing. I don't think it's like you have to build specific trip room for this for it to work. I really think you could fit on a team that just doesn't really benefit from trick room at all. Because, um, again, you can bring trick room yourself and just use it as your how to read, just breaking through teams. You know, it doesn't have to be... You know, I'm setting trip room for everybody else to hopefully do good. You can uh, do it for yourself, put in work, and then have the rest of your team function correctly on its own, obviously. But I really like Hatterini. I think it's incredibly, incredibly solid. I've been having a fun uh, time building with it for Classic. Again, only week one has gone up at this point, but um, beyond that, I've been building and playing another game for AP Classic, and it's a really, really great mod. I love it. It's a uh, good natural bulk. It's ridiculously high special attack and that great uh, utility option with the trick room, the healing wish, and other moves like that. So yeah, I definitely recommend you draft Hatterini if it does fit your team and try out some of the sets we talked about today um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, that is going to be Hatterini's draft league study. Um, I really do appreciate you guys watching. If you're new and you enjoy uh, you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. We have plenty of draft league studies going up. Plenty of Wi-Fi battles, draft league content itself, um, showdown lives, a bunch of different stuff like that. So if you did enjoy, definitely stick around. I think you'll enjoy the rest of the stuff as well. But with that being said, I do have our next draft league study um, set up and scheduled for Toxtricity. I was originally going to upload that first. I actually already recorded that one. And I said at the end of that one, like, let me know what you want 